Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed, coming to you from Fisher Moore College in Fort Worth, Texas. You know, it's no shocker that Catholic education has been rocked since the 1960s and ever since. It's still in a free fall, no matter how you measure it. Fewer Catholic colleges, the ones that have survived financially, have done so largely by abandoning the faith, thereby sticking around as colleges, but no longer Catholic. Fewer Catholic students, again, across the board, from elementary to high school to college and university enrollments, all down substantially. But more importantly than just a downturn in Catholic academics and institutions is, in general, the resulting downturn in the practice and belief of the faith, especially among college-age Catholics and recent graduates. The 20-something crowd is being lost in droves. Despite all the happy PR talk from church leaders, the youth are not coming back in numbers sufficient to even hold serve, much less expand the faith. And one of the leading causes of this is the lack of Catholic life and education in the college years on college campuses. So in response to this aspect of the overall crisis in the church, many Catholic laymen have simply done an end run around the issue and started their own Catholic colleges dedicated to handing on the faith in an academic setting. Since the 1970s, no less than two dozen efforts have been initiated, with total student enrollment numbering in the thousands across America. One major hallmark of these schools is their independence from the church establishment, which of course is responsible for the death spiral that Catholic education is currently experiencing. The efforts are coming in various stages, fits and starts, if you will, ranging from small to medium-sized and newer to slightly older. One such undertaking is here in Fort Worth, Texas at Fisher Moore College. One item that makes Fisher Moore unique is its adherence to the traditional Latin Mass, offered each day for the college's 40-plus student body, as well as faculty and staff, only the traditional Latin Mass is offered. Its Latin-only approach is centered around the maxim of lex credende, lex orande, lex vivende, translated roughly, how you believe is how you pray is how you live. It stems from a holistic view that to be Catholic is to be a soul that has integrity with regard to the faith in belief, worship, and action. Fisher Moore's current president, Michael King, is deeply concerned that many Catholic students, even from more traditional homeschooled families, leave the shelter of an excellent Catholic home and get swallowed up at Catholic colleges, having lost the faith even before the first semester is over. Well, I think most of the people here approach their jobs not only as teachers and administrators, but also as parents. I, I know I can speak for myself in that regard, and one of the things that uh, we see is situations where 18 years of, of really heroic work and sacrifice at home can be undone in two months when the, when the kids go off to college. We realize our job is to assist the family and the church in the formation of, of these young souls. Fisher Moore, he and the rest of the community, see as a place where the faith can be preserved and nurtured, expanded on in a four-year fully accredited program where the emphasis is getting into heaven as opposed to just getting ahead. It's great to be here with friends who share the same Catholic faith. We come from a lot of different backgrounds. We come from a lot of different families. But in every single case, our families have one thing in common. They want their kids to have a Catholic education that's in line with the magisterial teachings of the church. I knew I could trust the school, and I didn't have to worry about you know fishing through things, making sure everything's correct. Everything at the school revolves around the spiritual life. It's the core. We wake up in the morning with terse, the rosary, and mass. Everything flows from the mass. We offer up our intentions for the day, receive our Lord, and everything just sets forth from there. It's, uh, the liturgical life here is intrinsic to this school. I grew up in Nova Sordo Masses, and um, I've been to a few Masses before coming here, so I hadn't really had a lot of experience, but when I came here, I just fell in love. Now, there are a lot of other Catholic colleges around here, but none of them put the interior formation of the soul of their students at the forefront. We try to focus on maintaining a good interior life so that when we graduate from here, when we go to college, 
for our master's degrees, for our doctorates, or even if we immediately enter the workforce or enter into a vocation, whether to the family or to the religious life, what we want to do is to present ourselves in a way that we can spread the faith in whatever small way we can as foot soldiers, as the body of the church militant, as the body of Christ. It really, anybody, anybody would benefit from this. And so the more we can get here, the more we can spread it out and let others know just, just the truth of our faith, the beauty of it. Last summer, the college, which used to be known as the College of Thomas More, changed its name to include St. John Fisher, so including now the two names of the famous 16th century martyrs of English King Henry VIII, who had them both beheaded for their allegiance to the Catholic faith. And this past summer, the college moved into its new home here in a striking edifice in a Gothic revival-style building built over 100 years ago by the Sisters of St. Mary Namur as a boarding college, school, convent, and even a provincial house. The school also operates the Fishermore Academy for grades four through 12, which offers full service, live, interactive, online programs for students at home. And both the college and academy are seeing respectable gains in enrollment numbers. The day we were visiting campus, immediately following mass, the community processed out of the chapel carrying a portrait of our Lord presenting his sacred heart, where they enthroned the sacred heart in their main hallway, another example of the Catholic heart that beats strongly on this campus. And to add to the list, the school's leaders are committed to the idea that to many college students leaving college these days, they're saddled with these massive financial burdens and huge loans they take years to pay off, which wind up dictating their future choices oftentimes in careers and so forth. So the cost of tuition and room and board here is kept artificially low so as not to be an impediment to families and students wanting to continue their Catholic faith in a vibrant way into their college years and of course beyond. This approach can, of course, present some substantial challenges to the college's leaders. One of our driving uh, objectives is to keep it affordable. We do not participate in the federal uh, student loan program. We don't participate even in, in a private loan program. We, we don't want our students to have to go into debt to get an education. We have, we have lots of programs that spread our costs out over a much larger area than your typical you know, high-cost residential program. But uh, we need some time, and, and while we're maturing, we need the support of Catholics who see what we're doing, support it, believe it, it's important, and it needs to, to continue. And if through their generosity, we can make it happen. If the Catholic world in the West is going to experience a revival, it is going to be through efforts such as this, as well as many others, lay people, lay people making enormous sacrifices to preserve and pass on the authentic faith. And these efforts are worthy of support in not just prayer, which of course is needed, but also in financial commitment. It's clear by now that much of what passes for education and catechesis coming out of the Catholic establishment is so muddled and directionless so as to be essentially worthless. One even cursory glance around any aspect of Catholic life these days makes that abundantly clear. So there needs to be a rebirth in terms of bold initiatives striking out into the great unknown. Efforts like this here at Fishermore College are the 21st century version of the missionaries of centuries past. We recommend you check out the Fishermore webpage by just going on the link we've attached here and think about possibly helping them out. If committed and loyal Catholics, after all, who love the faith and live the faith don't pass it on, well, just who is going to? Coming to you from Fishermore College here in Fort Worth, Texas, God love you, I'm Michael Voris. Hi, I'm John Paul Volkanen. And I'm Jim Cables. We're here at the Church TV studios from Cleveland. You should sign up at churchmilitant.tv. For a premium account for only $10 a month, or a free account, which you get all the daily shows like The Vortex and churchmilitant.tv news. We really enjoyed our tour here. Thank, Thank you. you.